or what was to blame for the credit crunch has been the subject of intense debate. But for one leading economist, it's all to do with pay and incentives in the City of London and the world's other financial capitals. My name is Luis Garicano. I'm a professor of economics in the Department of Economics and Management of the London School of Economics. It's clear that bankers were being rewarded for taking excessive risk. I think the short-term nature of the, perform of the pay, which basically you can accrue it in a year and then leave somebody else holding the bag, and the fact that relative pay was so important, which means that you shouldn't think for yourself but basically doing what other people are doing. Both of those things combined to make a system in which everybody was kind of looking too narrowly ahead. I do think, however, that thinking of trying to solve the system is harder than it could seem. I think that the fact that pay is relative, that you're paying people, comparing how, for example, an asset manager is doing relative to other asset managers, uh, seems a bit crazy because it means that all asset managers end up doing the same thing in order to try to outperform their index by just a little bit. Uh, it's not something that is easy to modify because the basic problem is um, it's really hard to reward asset managers on their skill. We don't really know who's doing well and who's just being lucky. The way pay structures designed right now has to be radically changed. At the very least, two things that have to happen. One is um, we have to make the time on which these bonuses are accrued much longer, not one year, but three years or five years, I would say five years, the longer the better. Meaning if you do something very crazy that ends up very risky, that ends up giving you a lot of money this year, uh, but it was crazy, so it ends up blowing up in a bank in three years time, you shouldn't benefit from that. The money should go back to the bank. The pr current system is one where Tails I win, heads you lose. Because in a year I manage to get the compensation, um, I take a big risk. I buy, I borrow with the market's money, I buy 100 million of something. If it goes up, I get 200 million, I get a share of that. If it goes down, the worst that can happen is I get fired, which, okay, is bad, but not as, not as bad as 100 million extra would be good. The problem with incentives, says Professor Garricano, is that they can have unforeseen consequences. For instance, the intention of switching from two points to three points for a win was to make football more exciting. He says it's had the opposite effect. What happens in league games is that teams actually got more attack. You got more attacking football at 0-0. Zero zero. Teams were more entrepreneurial and trying to create more opportunities. There's more uh, forward uh, play, etc. by our measures. But once you're at 1-0, teams become very defensive. In a way, football becomes more calculating. By increasing the punishment for having that goal scored when you're slightly ahead, you also increase the incentives to kick, to play defensively, and to make ugly football. Of course, top footballers have an added incentive, big salaries. And Professor Garakano expects the pay gap between star players and the rest of us to widen still further. Think of city workers, but think of lawyers, doctors, artists, um, in all professions, the key thing that is changing is the effective size of the market. So, um, think of just let's think of opera for one second. 200 years ago, if you were a good opera singer, you sang in some bigger halls. If you were a mediocre opera singer, you sang in little villages. Uh, now, everybody can hear the best opera singer because they can buy their CD. So, the difference between the big opera singer, the good opera singer, and the mediocre one is humongous because the big one gets the whole market, the second or the third one gets nothing. The communications and information technology makes it possible for fewer individuals to command a larger set of resources in many areas. You can all hear the best singer, and we can all see the most fun uh, film, etc. It means that in all of those areas, and I think it's increasingly in all the areas, you care to have the top designer design your car, and you're going to all get that car, and you don't need to have kind of you know little factories making cars for different markets. So I do think that the physical these economies of scale that make for many fragmented markets are going a a away and we are getting more and more of a single unified world where the top guy has basically a worldwide sized market. Kaka can be watched by kids in Asia, in Singapore, in Japan, in Brazil, everywhere. So everybody wants to have that player. They don't need to watch the 17th Brazilian who came that year who is maybe pretty good, but you can watch the top guy, but that means the top guy is the one that everybody is bidding for and his wage is going to go up.